How's it chaps? Grant here with another episode of Burden Bolts and today we are going to tear down this thing. It is the Volt's 18 volt brushless XR multi oscillating tool. Now in previous videos we did have a look. I gave you my initial thoughts about the unit and uh, today we're actually going to tear it down, uh, have a look inside just to see how well it is made, talk about that type of thing. Now I give you all of these uh, little bits of information uh, from an engineer's perspective. I did complete all of my full qualifications at the University of Garage Hackers, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get started. Ferry Groot, or Groot, I'm not too sure how you pronounce that. He is one of the viewers that commented on the review of this tool, and uh, I did mention in that video that uh, it was a jack of all trades but a master at none, and he kind of did agree with that, um, but I also agree with what he said, where uh, the more you use it, uh, the more uses you find for it, and it is really, really useful so far. Um, something that I, we were kind of chatting back and forth about is uh, I was saying that I didn't really like the variable speed control of this paddle trigger. I thought it was a little bit too sensitive, although that is probably just an IDT 10 error, the idiot between the tool and the ground. Um, so I probably need a few more hours on it just to fine-tune the use of the speed control. Um, but we will open it and have a look inside what is actually um, giving us that sensitive feedback. Before we actually tear down the unit, uh, I want to comment on this release lever. Now, I did mention in previous videos that even though it looks like it is aluminium, uh, it is not. In fact, it is plastic. It is a PA6 glass fiber reinforced 50%, so we'll have a look at that just now. Um, but uh, something that you'll notice is when you press the release lever, it actually bends slightly. Um, so that is indicative of it being plastic. Uh, the glass fiber, of course, does keep it uh, really stiff, or as stiff as it possibly could be. Uh, but I would like to see this release lever being aluminium. Uh, I think it would last a lot longer then. Something else we could consider uh, before we actually take the unit apart, and that is about the lever. Uh, if you have a look at the amount of material around this hinge point, there's not actually a lot of material, and this being plastic is going to be a weak point around here. Now, you need to consider that the spring inside here is actually very, very strong. So you're going to be pulling and pushing uh, on this lever quite often, and the first point that it's going to break is probably going to be over here. Um, also on the nose uh, inside over there. Uh, this is also going to be a nylon a glass fiber reinforced, probably 30%, but we'll confirm that just now. As you can see, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of meat around there either, so that could also potentially be a weak point, especially if you drop the tool on this point, uh, that could weaken the plastic somewhat. So the first thing that uh, we see here, the clamshell is made out of PA6 uh, glass fiber reinforced 30%. So that is a nylon uh, with a TPE overmolding. The TPE overmolding is this black rubber bit here that's uh, cast over the uh, over the clamshell, uh, fairly thick and really nice and soft. Uh, makes for a nice grip. Not too sure how long it's going to last though, especially if you are using it uh, where there are chemicals involved, especially on your hands, that type of thing. Uh, but overall, the casing does look fairly new. Uh, the mold still looks pretty good. Um, I don't see any kind of machine marks or places where they've had to manually kind of make changes to the mold. Uh, the two halves just fit through together really well. Something else that I do see is these rubber kind of little blocks. There's four of them. And I'm guessing because this is a vibrating tool that uh, the manufacturers wanted to try and minimize, minimize vibrations uh, from the inside being transferred to the motor and uh, to the electronics here. So these two actually press on the motor housing and these two press on this plastic housing here that houses the, the switch and the electronicals. This is something slightly different to what we see in items like drills where uh, the switching mechanism and then the actual control circuit speed control is uh, down in the bottom. Uh, in this unit, they are actually all together in one housing. Actually, before we have a look at this, uh, something interesting, there's nice little soft rubber inserts. Now, I wonder if, I, yeah, there we go. I can actually pull one of those things off. So that's just a really soft little rubber insert. That little rubber insert uh, is installed onto this small post over here. And I think this insert in conjunction with this rubber insert stops the battery from vibrating. Now that is different to things like tools 
uh, like drills, that type of thing, where you can see there's actually no rubber suppression to stop the battery for, from vibrating separately to the tool. Um, quite a nice little, quite a nice little feature or design uh, feature on this on this unit. Taking a look at the business side of the clamshell, uh, at the bottom we have the terminal, that's for the battery. Uh, the next bit we've got is the switch and the speed control uh, mechanism, I suppose, or the electronicals. Then we've got our brushless motor and then the gearbox. And that part of the gearbox is going to be turning or changing the rotary motion of the motor into an oscillatory or an oscillating motion. Uh, that's for the tool end. And uh, also don't forget about the light. Uh, quite a nice little feature to see what you're doing in the dock. Just having a closer look at how the actual pedal part of the switch works. Now I've removed the lock in the center that's in that open hole but for those of you who don't know you can actually uh, start the tool by pressing the front of the switch and you can see that little speed control pin moves in and out uh, and you can also push on the back of the switch uh, which also pushes the little speed control pin in and out or you can just grab the complete switch and push it down and it moves the speed control pin in and out. So uh, a multi directional um, trigger uh, which basically ends up uh, just controlling the speed uh, starting and stopping the machine. One thing that I don't like about this is if you look closely over here uh, this little bit right over there that's a plastic pin. Now this entire lever or this entire switch mechanism actually pivots inside here on the small little pin. Uh, now this little pin is of course plastic and over time that little nub now you can see it's not actually very thick at all and that little nib can break off either on that side or on this side and once that does uh, it's going to pretty much render the switch or the pedal system pretty much useless. Um, would it be nice to see that as being uh, some type of aluminium section or, or steel pin into uh, uh, aluminium little housing although I suppose that does cost a little bit more money. Uh, I don't see any material markings on this however if you just scratch a small amount off. If I just cut a small amount off of this blade, I can feel that there is glass fiber reinforcing in here as it cuts the fibers. Um, also, it does does feel quite strong. Uh, the piece of plastic is very strong. Uh, as for the black piece of plastic here, or the pedal, should I say? Same thing. Also feels like it is glass fiber reinforced. So it's probably just a nylon PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30%, just like the rest of the tool is. Looking at the way the tool locks in the on position, it's actually quite simple. Uh, normally the pedal would be like that. Now these two pieces have of course been removed from the unit, uh, but when the machine is off, that's how it is. And as you press the pedal, the pedal moves into that open section and then when you lock the machine on you either push this little trigger or this little um, lever plastic lever backwards or forwards and then it stops the the pedal from pulling backwards now again if you have a close look at these little pins or these little plastic pieces they are very very small little plastic pieces and this being a vibrating machine together with that really really small not very much meat there on that plastic. Uh, that's also again potentially another weak point. There is also a small steel pin inside the pedal trigger. Now that's to help the mechanism rock backwards and forwards so that it can switch on when you push the pedal you know, from the front or from the back. And you can also see there again, there's not a lot of meat around that pin. So this is gonna be another potential weak point in, in this machine. Uh, again, especially because it is a vibrating unit. Uh, well, at least that's my dog nonsense. Okay, enough about the switch. Let's look at some of the other stuff. The other half of the clamshell looks uh, very much the same as the first half that we took off. It's also got these little rubber inserts to suppress vibration. Uh, however, underneath the switch, there's no rubber inserts like this one had over there. The housing for the uh, switch and speed control, now that's underneath here, is enclosed in a PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30%. Uh, also quite a strong plastic uh, or nylon enclosure for, for the switch mechanism. I'm sure that's just the part number, CAV9, not too sure what that stands for. I haven't seen any other markings on this little unit, but I'm sure, again, this is just part numbers, mod, SPS, SPD, pin number there, and a couple of other little database numbers. I don't think those are actually going to mean very much. Not much to look at on the other side of the speed controller, as we can see that 
it is a potted circuit. Now, a lot of the tools that we see nowadays are all potted, but especially on a tool like this, where uh, it is a vibrating tool, a vibration is a killer of electronics. So everything has been cast into this soft somatic, uh, I think that's what you might call it, um, like a silicon type of thing to stop the vibration and to stop dry solder joints. Uh, it also keeps out the dust and will also keep out the moisture. Something that I don't like, and again, we see this all the time, is if you look at the little lever or the little switches speed control uh, shaft over there, if we push it in and out, uh, that's what moves all the time. And it would be nice to see a bellows or something on here, because over time, again, if you are sanding or cutting, you're gonna get a lot of dust that collects up in here, and it's gonna eventually ingress or move into the switch, uh, or into the switching mechanism. So it would be really nice to see a bellows. Uh, as for the other electronicals here, I can't really see any markings on any of them, so not too sure what those branded products, or if they are even branded. Um, hopefully they are. <laughs> hopefully DeVault hasn't cheaped out. Something else that I'm not too fond of now, maybe somebody else, one of the viewers can weigh in here, and maybe they've got more information or more knowledge than my garage hacker qualifications, but that's the terminals for the battery. Now, these are the main positive and the negative is on the other side down there. The two balance leads are in the middle, uh, but as you can see, this is kind of a welded joint. Now, I would prefer, especially with an item that vibrates, I would prefer to see a crimped and then a fastened or a screwed connection over here. Uh, over time, I'm pretty sure that these things can, not that they will be dry solder joints, but that, that can quack, crack off relatively easily. Uh, so be aware of that. I couldn't find any material markings on this little plastic battery connection plate. However, I did cut a small piece of it off over there. And as you cut it again, you can hear the knife cutting the fibers. So it's probably got some glass fiber reinforcing in it as well. So that's a nice little touch. Uh, not also too clear, but that little block over there and this little block over here are also soft rubber. So in this tool, all over the place are little soft rubber suppressors, uh, just to try and suppress some of that vibration transferring onto, say, the battery terminals or the switching mechanism or the motor, is which, which is what we saw earlier. Again, something that I'm not too happy to see. If you have a look here, there are solder joints. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Now, especially on a tool that vibrates, uh, you can, over time, uh, get these solder joints breaking off. So I would have definitely preferred to have seen a, a crimped and a screwed connection. Now, we have seen this type of connection, let's say, in the previous teardown that I did. That was the DeVault circular saw. So I don't see why they couldn't have done it in this machine. I think they've just cheaped out slightly. Uh, in the bottom over here, you can see that there's the connector for the hall sensors. Now, this being a brushless motor, there will be magnetic or hall sensors is what I think they're called in the back of the unit and they feed information, positional information back to the speed control. Uh, that little connection is glued together, so that is quite nice to see. Uh, of course, the motor is slightly dusty because I have been using this product. Um, and that is also another thing uh, if you need to maybe keep in mind, using it in very, very dusty and dirty environments. Of course, the gearbox is nicely sealed up, but the rest of everything else over here is very much open to sucking in dust and dirt over time. So keeping it clean, you know, giving it a bit of a spray off with some high pressure air might be something to keep in mind. The front and the back of the motor are made out of a nylon type of plastic, PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30% because it says so over there. And uh, this is probably just the model number of uh, the motor itself. Something interesting, there's uh, some hand coquied on marks. It looks like an M or an H, uh, not sure. Maybe that was uh, quality control uh, for the person that was putting this little item together. Maybe somebody knows and can let me know in the comments section below. Here are the material markings on the back of the motor. And also quite nice to see is a ball bearing on the back housing. Uh, so normally these might be oil light bushings, uh, but this is actually a small ball bearing. Uh, not too sure what this white paint on each of these little fasteners means. Uh, Normally, the white paint would be going over to the plastic housing to see if it's been taken off before or to stop it from actually rotating out like a type of Loctite. So I'm not too sure what they were going for on this. Something that is slightly different to what I've seen in other tools is the motor and gearbox arrangement. 
Now, in a normal tool, your motor and your gearbox would kind of index into each other. That would be, let's say, in a drill. But, oh no, not in this tool. Uh, we've got two independently rotating items. And the thing that indexes these two items together is actually the clamshell. So, uh, I think they are getting away with this because there's not exactly a lot of torque that goes into making an oscillating tool that's transferred through the oscillating tool. So, that's probably the reason they've done that. The gearbox is of the sintered and powdered aluminium alloy type, or at least that's what it looks like, and it also looks pretty strong. Give it the old tap test, and it sounds really solid, so, so far, pretty happy with that. Looking at the business end of the motor, we can see that there is a ball bearing that goes into the, uh, the gearbox housing, and this is an offset housing and an offset bearing and that's what causes the tool to oscillate backwards and forwards and we can actually see that if you have a look on this side of the bearing and you compare that to that side of the bearing you can actually see that it's offset now that bearing goes into this end of the gearbox now you can see there's quite a nice lot of grease in here which is good to see uh, and because that bearing is offset it kind of turns around or rotates in here like a cam or concentrically is I think the technical term for that I might be wrong though, um, but it goes in between these two little arms and uh, when that thing rotates it kind of pushes the arm side to side, side to side and this is what it looks like inside as it rotates, but of course really, really fast, I think up to 20,000 RPM and that's what kind of gives the tool its uh, 1.6 degree, I believe, on this tool, uh, side to side motion, the oscillating motion. So by that bearing rotating really, really fast and doing that. The business end of the gearbox is also quite sturdily or robustly made, so you have that spring that holds your tool in place. I don't know, this would supposed to be the tool flange. Uh, well, that and that would be the tool flange maybe. And on the top here, well, the top and the bottom, uh, we've got bearings. And now this is a 607 LUT. I think it's a just a standard ball bearing, uh, nothing too spectacular there. So there we have it chaps, that's the teardown of the DeVolta DCS355 oscillating multi-tool. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with the product. Um, again, I don't know a hell of a lot about engineering and design, uh, just I know what I've seen in the past. And there are a few things that I would like to see improved in future versions. Maybe some of you guys have got comments um, or know more about these things, so please leave me some comments in the comments section below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And to all my subscribers who regularly watch, thank you very much for always watching my videos. I think I'm going to get this thing back together as soon as possible. <laughs> Guys, until next time, be good, keep safe. Cheers.